Hello everybody, my name is Steven and welcome back to the Storytime channel. Without wasting any time, let's get into our stories of the day. Green vest equals must work there. I have a green vest I love to wear and as you can imagine, when walking within 5 feet of a sporting goods store, people always ask me for help. Now most of the time I tell them I don't work there but maybe I can help as you do. However, there was this one lady which made no sense. You see, I was at the now defunct Kmart wearing my green vest when a lady comes up to me asking where a specific movie was. I was browsing electronics. Now normally you would not ask the guy in shorts, crocs, a t-shirt and a green vest where X was and since I was on vacation, I live in Canada, I tried to help her find the movie section and started walking away after a minute or two of trying. Note, Kmart's vests are red. Not one minute later, she yanks on the back of my collar and tells me I can't walk away from her like that. Me, sort of done with her at this point, blows it off and I simply say, sorry, I gotta go. Which was true because like all of my stateside trips, we only spent a limited amount of time at each store. Now, she's not having it and says, fine, I'll just call your manager then. Cue her calling the service phone and ringing out the poor girl at the customer service desk to send a manager right away. Well, now you not only have a distressed customer service representative, but me trying to tell the lady I don't work there and the now pissed off manager thinking one of the 16-year-old kids he's hired isn't doing their job. So the manager gets there and sees me and the lady having it out and get between us. The lady opens up on the manager about how terrible of an employee I am and how she should get her movie for free because the service here was terrible. The manager simply looks at me and goes, Miss, this man doesn't work for us. She responds by saying, then why am I wearing a vest and helping her then? Now here's the kicker. The manager, dumbfounded at this, goes, Miss, not only is this man not working for us, but you can see he's not even from this country. As he points to the Scouts Canada logo on said vest. Not to mention that vest color isn't even the colors of the store. What makes you think a guy who was in shorts, crocs, and the wrong colored vest would be working for us? This goes on for a while with the lady making dumb excuses and this poor manager trying to defend the Canadian standing behind him until she finally gives up, knocks over a shelf of movies, which I wish had her movie on it for irony's sakes, and runs out the door. So yeah, one of the weirder vest experiences of my time. So folks, I'm going to give you one of the most controversial questions I've ever given you on this channel. Crocs. Yay or nay? Let me know in the comment section down below. Even in the cattle country, you can't escape Karens. Bit different story to most of the ones on the subreddit, but I think it's still a good fit here. I work as a ranch hand on my girlfriend's family ranch out in the middle of cow country, USA. The closest town has a population of less than 300 just for scale. It's one of the larger ones in the immediate area. Over several thousand acres and hundreds of cows. Most graze in the pasture, but there are always some that are fed hay in the barnyard. Unfortunately, we had run out of our stockpile, so we called around to find who had hay to spare, and I was quickly dispatched to fetch. The only place that had hay available was a family-run feed store slash ranch, about halfway between us and what is the closest city. Even cattle country is not immune to sprawl, as farms are slowly turned into estates for bored Karens to move into with their high-priced lawyer husbands. This story involves just such a Karen. Our cast, me, a ranch hand dressed in a stereotypically excessive amount of denim with a Carhartt ball cap and work boots. Karen, your middle-aged white woman dressed to the gills in her English riding outfit, complete with riding crop and helmet. The type of woman to make her husband move to the country so she can ride her horse easier but then get angry that the farm next door is too loud. What with all the farming and such? FYI, don't make a fool of yourself in such an extremely small town. No one has anything better to do than gossip, especially during COVID. Now that our backdrop is set, I'll get to the point. I had arrived at the feed store to pick up the hay. The store had already started to stack my order, 120 bales, outside for me as this was going to take three trips to complete. I paid for my whole order and the first and second trips went without issue. I was thinking it was going to be an easy day of stacking hay and driving and that I would be done early if only I knew what awaited me on my third trip. 
I pulled my beat up Sierra back into the feed store for the third time that day. The sun hung low in the sky and beat down on my neck as I begun to load my final bales. I'm sweating away the final hours of the day when a white Escalade EXT pulls down the dirt driveway. For those that don't know, it's Cadillac's attempt to turn an SUV into a pickup without changing any of the SUV parts. As anyone that's driven a proper utility slash work truck will tell you, it's useless for anything but looking fancy and bragging that you have a pickup at the country club. At first, I pay it no mind and keep loading my bales. It pulls up near my truck. After a pregnant pause, which I could only assume was to straighten her hair and touch up her makeup, Karen emerges from her useless mobile and proceeds to stare at me silently. I give her a nod howdy and keep loading my bales. After each bale, she stamps her fine leather boots in the dirt louder and louder. After five bales, Karen had enough. Well, aren't you going to help me? I would like to buy some hay. She basically yells at me. No, but I'm sure someone inside can. Load 10 of these in my not a pickup while I go inside to pay. She said as she pointed at my yet to be loaded pile. I tell her no as they are my bales and I don't work at the feed store. Yes, you do. You're the hand that loads them. Just do your job and stop being lazy. She turns and stops inside. Mutters about rude employees. How I was being lazy by loading my own bales, I'll never know. She re-emerges as I'm loading the final bales from my pile onto the top of my truck. Seeing the pile is gone and none on her pickup, she flies into a rage. Why didn't you load mine? All you stupid rednecks are the same and don't know how to listen. I'm a redhead and burn quite easily, so at that point in the day, I did actually have a sunburn on my neck. She rushes up to me as I again tell her that I do not in fact work at the feed store. I throw the final bale onto the top of the stack on my truck. Loading complete, I brush past her and climb into my truck. She screams, I won't let you leave till I get my hay. She runs to her still empty two wheel drive pickup and drives it to the mouth of the driveway and parks it across blocking the entire entrance. She smugly looks at me from the driver's seat and yells, now give me my hay. Now the driveway was flanked on either side by muddy ruts filled with rain from the night before. To a Karen, it would seem impassable, but to a rancher, it's something you drive across multiple times on most days. As Karen sat smugly in the driver's seat thinking she'd bested me, I simply reached down and threw my truck into four high, gunned the motor and drove through the mud to get around her down the rest of the driveway and onto the main road. The best part was that my front tire splashed the mud high enough to cover Karen herself as she had left her window open and managed to get herself stuck as she tried to follow me down the drive. People really need to understand that if somebody says they don't work there, they probably don't work somewhere. I still don't understand why anybody would think they're trying to be deceiving. If anybody was actually employed at these places, they wouldn't be trying to avoid you by saying they didn't work there. He can't help you. He's a hologram. Now, this is not my story. I'm only telling you guys what I saw a while back before the COVID-19 lockdown happened. I was at the Science Museum. Now, they were starting to use holographic technology and these holograms were so lifelike. Now, problem is that it's easy to mistake them for real people since they are dressed like the staff. The holograms only function to explain an exhibit if you push a button. Now, I see this woman approach one of the holograms. She has her child, four or five years old, crying. She's annoyed and wants to look for the bathroom and is demanding where she can find it. She thought she was talking to an employee. It was a hologram. When they ignore her, she started yelling and then tried to grab their arm while yelling for a manager. She passed right through them and falls down. Now, this isn't the funniest thing to happen. It was when she freaks out and yells, ghost and the museum's haunted. She grabs her kids and runs out. Jeez, lady, don't you know a hologram when you see one? Oh, the future will not be kind to these kinds of people. Family assumes I'm an employee after I stop kids from tapping on the glass. First of all, them assuming I worked there was pretty much entirely my fault. I was 16 at the time this takes place, visiting a very nice taxidermy museum with my family. Went ahead to view the entomology exhibit, as I've always enjoyed creepy crawly things of all kinds. This particular exhibit was very well put together, with a handful of live critters on display besides all the dead ones. 
tarantula, hissing cockroaches, the usual suspects. I was in there by myself at first, but it wasn't long before another family came in. There were two women, one of whom was the mother and the other one I'm pretty sure was the aunt. They had a baby in a stroller and two boys with them. I'm bad at estimating ages, but the boys were around maybe seven or eight. At first all was well and I minded my own business. Then the boys started tapping on the glass containers that were clearly labeled live animal and do not touch. Now, maybe they couldn't read very well, I don't pretend to know. But neither adult did anything to stop them, so after a moment of tap, 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 it won't move. I went over and very gently explained what the sign said and that tapping bothered the animals. They stopped and I went back to admiring the shiny beetles. The next thing I know, the boys are coming over to where I'm looking and asking, are these ones alive? I explained that no, they're not and they accept that. Until the next case, where they ask the same question. This happens several times and I explain that the bugs with pins sticking through them are dead and have been dead for a rather long time. After a while they get bored with this and go back to their adults who are looking at the butterflies. Now I'm not an eavesdropper but this is a very small room and we were the only ones in there so it was quiet. I overheard the mom wondering if they were moths or butterflies. To which I told her they were butterflies and explained the difference. One of the boys asked if the butterflies were venomous which neither mom nor auntie knew the answer to, so once again I stepped in to explain that no, they aren't, but some are poisonous. On their way out of the exhibit, the adults both thanked me for my help, clearly under the impression that I was an employee. I didn't correct them and said it was no problem. I'm glad to help. It's nowhere near the first or last time I've been mistaken for an employee. We frequent zoos and museums quite often, and since I'm fairly knowledgeable on animal life, I frequently step in to answer questions for people. Honestly, if there's no employees there, I would actually really enjoy having this experience, getting extra details and information about the things I'm looking at being told to me by a knowledgeable person. Sounds like OP is a pretty darn good person to me. Oh, are you using that? Hide of pandemic, I needed to get some groceries for myself and dog. I live in a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood and shop at the local market. I'm looking for a shopping basket and finally find one. Pick it up and I'm about to begin shopping when this middle-aged white dude comes up to me and says, Oh yes, I need that. I'm Hispanic and Asian so you can guess from there that he assumed I work there. He proceeds to walk towards me, hands open, expecting me to give it to him. I give him the what the freak look and he quickly responds, oh, are you using that? I walk away still with the what the freak face and see him turning as red as my basket. Putting aside the blatant stereotyping and borderline racism, I just wish people had more awareness on social cues. There was probably more than enough reason here to not assume that this person was working there. Clothing, attire, whatever, their appearance, their outward expression. I'm sure there was something that would be able to tell you that maybe they're holding the basket because they're shopping there. But with that being said, that's all the stories we have for today, so what I want to know is which of these stories that I've read for you today are your personal favorite and why? Let me know in the comment section down below. And thank you all so very much for watching and listening to the Storytime channel today. If you haven't yet already, please consider subscribing to the Storytime channel and don't forget to turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. Thank you all again for watching and listening to the Storytime channel.